Hey, my friend, it's Melanie Ferguson, your host of Creatives on Fire, the podcast where I hope to inspire you to create a profitable six-figure following online. So turn it up and listen in to amazing stories of success, along with behind-the-scenes secrets and valuable tips from, you guessed it, Creatives on Fire. Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. This week, I am going to change it up a little bit. We are going to do the first ever social media update here on the podcast. So if you are ready to hear about the latest trends, updates, and tricks and tips about all of the social media platforms, then tune in and listen to the next few minutes as I share what I have learned from different sources, and I hope that it helps your business. So let's go. There's a lot, a lot, a lot going on with Facebook lately. Facebook has added so many things. Some of them, some people have, and some of them, some people don't. Podcasts are fairly still new to Facebook, so I have several business pages, and one of them I did add this podcast to. It's the Creatives on Fire business page over on Facebook. It transfers automatically over there with an RSS feed. I know not everybody listening here has a podcast, but if you do or you're thinking about one, this is a great addition that they've made and it makes it very seamless. You still get credited with the downloads, even though it's going straight from Facebook. So I really like the podcast on Facebook option because you've got to go where the people are. Now, in that same vein, if you do not have a podcast yet, you might be interested in this new feature that Facebook has added, trying to compete with Clubhouse called Live Audio Rooms. The Live Audio Rooms are available now on pages as well as groups. You literally go in there and create a live audio room and you can invite multiple people to come on with you. You can even have a sponsor for your live audio room. You can schedule a live audio room. These show up as posts in your newsfeed. And you can even go live in an audio room as your personal profile. I recommend if you have a business, go create an audio room for your business and just post to it. It is so easy to use. You do not have to get camera ready. You can just give the information to your followers that you want to give without showing your face. This is a great addition that Facebook has added. And I think that they're going to be pushing that out for people that are uh, utilizing it, meaning you'll get some more engagement if you utilize the tools that Facebook gives you first. Now, we all know about Instagram Reels, but what about Facebook Reels? Facebook has been trying out Reels across platform. So they started with groups and then slowly but surely pages have been able to post Reels as well as profiles. So if you have not tried out Facebook Reels, go for it. I think that they are a little clunky. They have some ways to go. You can uh, definitely just repurpose your Instagram reel and plug it right into the Facebook platform, but you will see a little bit of reach with those. I add them separately, so I'll add the reel to my Facebook page, and then I'll purposely go and add it separately to my Facebook group. I'm sure you can just share it from one to the other, but I've not done that because I'm thinking I'll get double the exposure. I'm not sure. So try out Facebook Reels. Let me know if you've had success with them and how your organic reach has benefited. Now, Facebook has started doing co-broadcasting. If you go live, you have the option to add up to two more guests to go live with you at the same time. This can be a great alternative to maybe a Zoom or 
a Be Live or StreamYard. So you could just go live organically, natively inside of Facebook with multiple guests. And I have not personally done this yet, but it could be a good alternative to keep everything in-house. Another small hack that is coming out is access to live support within Facebook. So this has been a really long time coming. This is where you are supposedly going to be able to access a live support person if you cannot log into your Facebook account. So if you've been locked out for any reason, they are saying that you are going to be able to have access to a live support person to help you get access to your account again. Facebook is going all in on groups again. So keep your page going, but definitely lean in to your groups as well. On the group's forefront, they are adding subgroups. And these subgroups, they are offering as like a niche within your niche. So these subgroups can house paid subscriptions. So maybe you want to take your group and a section of people out of your free group and let them pay you to be in a subgroup. And with those subscriptions, Facebook is trying to help you keep more of the money there. They're also going to give you the email address of every subscriber who becomes a paid member of your paid subgroup. Also in groups and subgroups, there are shops now. So you can have your products live in Facebook in a group for people to shop natively. This is huge. So used to, you'd have to give them a link to go over to your Etsy or your Shopify or even your Instagram shop, but not now. Now you can have people shop directly within your Facebook group. Now, not everyone will have access, like I said at the beginning, to every single one of these new tools, but as they roll out, keep an eye out for them and always be checking your back office, your creator studio, to see what you have access to. Now, this one is kind of uh, a few people maybe already have access to this, but not very many do. This will be rolling out more and more over the first quarter. This is called professional mode for your personal profile. So basically what it is, is Facebook is saying so many creators have been creating content on their personal profile when they weren't supposed to, that now they're just going to start letting you toggle between personal profile and a professional mode for your personal profile. So what that means is you want to keep your Facebook page. You still need to keep your Facebook page. That is your business card. That is where people go to learn more about your business. But now over on your personal profile, you will have the opportunity to post business content and only share it with people that are interested in your business content, meaning you can decide what stays personal and private and what becomes public and business. You can also toggle between personal and professional mode when you want to post your child's birthday party or something else on your personal profile that wouldn't necessarily pertain to your business audience. So this is, you know, coming to a lot of us and Some people, I I know I probably will participate in it. You can have up to 5,000 friends over on your personal profile, but on followers, it's unlimited. So there again, you can have an unlimited additional number of followers on your personal profile moving forward as your professional mode kicks in. All right. Let's round this out. There are a couple more things with Facebook. Like I said, Facebook is always just consistently, consistently adding new things, adding new things for us to try, to learn, to um, experiment with, and it's never boring. Let's just put it that way. So they have live selling. If you have a product and you want to, or a brick and mortar, and you want to 
do a live sale on Facebook. You now can do that natively. It's coming to the shops and the groups as well, but you can set up a live video as an actual live sale. So the people can actually make their purchases during your live sale without ever having to leave your live video. So in the past, when you were creating a live sale, you would have to use a third party app to invoice the people and have them pay. And then a lot of times they would actually leave your live video to go make their purchases. And there you'd be sitting there still trying to do your live sale, but people were popping off going and making purchases. Well, Facebook has decided to make this feature native for you. And now your audience can purchase items during this live selling mode directly from your page. Stars. Now, I don't use stars, but I mean, a lot of people do. And what I mean by that is I don't use them as a specific an an income outlet for me. They do, people do purchase stars on my pages and things like that. I just don't promote them. But a lot of people do and they have come up with stars parties. So this is another kind of gaming tactic to try to kind of ramp up the purchases of stars by your followers while you're live. So um, for those of you who aren't familiar, stars are like Instagram badges. It's almost it's it's literally pennies on the dollar. So people will purchase a star for a dollar and you get like six cents, I think, for the star. I mean, it's like a penny. It's like a penny. A star. It's very small. You have to have a great number of stars. Now, it will add up. You can earn ultimately maybe one or $200 a month if you really push the stars. But for myself, I haven't seen a lot of growth income wise with stars, but I would love, love, love to hear from you. Let's switch gears really quickly and dive into the world of Instagram. So Instagram, as we know, has rolled out reels. It has become a staple for your account. Like they're not going anywhere. They even have the Reels bonus program where if you are offered, they will pay you for views on your Reels. Now, you don't have to get into the bonus program for Reels on Instagram or Facebook to benefit from them. They will, I promise, grow your reach. They are pushing those out further and further, driving your reach. It's the biggest contributor to driving your reach that you will find right now is the reels. Now, a good practice is to warm up your audience just right before you post your reel. And what I mean by that, go like some of your audience's content, go comment, go get active for like 15, 20 minutes before you post your reel post your reel and then hang around and actually interact again with your audience. And Instagram sees that, Facebook sees that, and they will reward that by pushing it out to more and more people. Now stay tuned because I am going to share with you best times for posting. All right. Now you can actually in Instagram now pick your favorites. So what they've decided to do is allow you to choose favorite accounts that you follow. And then you can actually have those show up in your feed. That won't be the only thing that shows up in your feed, but you're guaranteed to have a better chance of seeing those that you favorited. So you definitely want to share this little tip to your audience and invite them to choose your account as one of their favorites. Now, Stories, stories, stories. You definitely want to be in stories. Stories and reels are going to be the two greatest factors in growing your page in 2022. They are testing 60 second stories. I don't know how well those will do, um, but they are testing those. And I'll let you know if those come out for me or you let me know if you've had them and how they do for you as well. 
So stories, you're going to want to make sure that you are creating at least one to three slides every 24 hours. These are going to be served up at the top of your feed, which keeps you at the top of mind for your followers. Now you can turn on the automatic share where when you create an Instagram story, it will automatically share it to your Facebook story. So we're all about saving time. And this is something I would definitely recommend. However, keep in mind, because I've seen this so many times, that when you have your share feature on for stories, that Facebook shares your stories differently. That little link sticker is not going to work natively unless you actually put the link over on Facebook. So pay attention to that and make sure that you check it um, ever so often. Mine actually is disconnected somehow and it says it's sharing, but it's not. So I physically have to go over and recreate my stories on Facebook after I recreate them on Instagram. But just keep in mind, stories are key. You're going to want to have one to three slides every 24 hours. They're at the top of feed, top of mind. All right, moving on, we are going to chat about the best times. So this is going to be kind of just a skeleton idea, but I did get this information from a reputable source called Social Bakers, and they have an amazing graphic that I will drop in the show notes below that talks about the best times to post on each of the social media platforms. And again, you can take these uh, with a grain of salt because each audience is different and you know when your people are on the most. But I would say that this is a nice little rule of thumb. If you are like me and you're always wanting to know, when should I create this content? When should I post this content? When am I going to get the biggest bang for my buck? So on Facebook, they are saying that 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. is the sweet spot. Then on Instagram, it is five or one to five p.m. So all afternoon on on Instagram. Now, if you're going to post a video on Instagram, they're saying after 9 p.m. is a great time for people to scroll. All right. And then we are on to TikTok. If you have a TikTok account, they are saying that, you know, they are, you know, playing with coming up with three minute videos as an option as opposed to the up to 60 second videos. But the shorter videos are actually performing the best. But TikTok is testing out three minute videos, just so you know, and their best times to post over on TikTok are 6am to 9am, Monday and Wednesday, 10 to 11pm. And Saturdays and Sundays, 7 to 11am, and 4 to 8 p.m. Like I said, I'm going to drop the graphic below so you guys can see these times. Or actually, the times aren't on the graphic here. I'm going to put them in the show notes so that you have them. Sorry about that. Then on YouTube. So for those of you who have YouTube accounts, YouTube is an amazing organic reach platform. If you do not already have a presence on YouTube, you're going to want to at least go reserve your account today so that you have it when you are ready to start that. YouTube, they say to post between 2 and 4 p.m. on Thursdays and Fridays and 10 and 11 a.m. on Saturday and Sunday. And then Pinterest, we don't want to leave Pinterest out. Pinterest is best to post between 8 and 11 p.m any day of the week, and 2 to 4 a.m. So I guess if you can't sleep at night and you uh, don't know what else to do, don't just scroll on Pinterest, post. Pin some pins on Pinterest, they said, between 2 and 4 a.m. is one of the better times to post content. So let me just review those really quickly because like I said, um, they will be in the show notes below, but there's no graphic. So Facebook, 8 to 10 a.m., Instagram, 1 to 5 p.m., video after 9, TikTok, 6 to 9 a.m., Monday, Wednesday, 10 to 11 p.m., Sunday and Saturday, 7 to 11 a.m., and 4 to 8 p.m. So apparently, TikTok, there's a pretty wide variety of times you can post. They're not really picky. (laughs) Then YouTube, 2 to 4 p.m., Thursday and Friday, 10 to 11 a.m., Saturday and Sunday. Pinterest, 8 to 11 p.m., 
and 2 to 4 a.m. So again, these are just rules of thumb. You do not have to follow them to the T, but if you're scheduling anyway, why not schedule them in the optimum time? So research your audience, see when they're on the most, and then also take these factors into consideration and just schedule your content. And by the way, scheduling does not hurt your reach. That went away five years ago. You can use a scheduler. You can use a non-Facebook scheduler. All of the reach is the exact same. And if you're not sure, just try it out. 30 days on Facebook natively and 30 days on a third-party scheduler. I have done this multiple times and it is no different. No different. All right. So let's chat really quickly here at the end about what kind of posts need to be posted for 2022 to get this all elusive Facebook organic reach that we want. Because as we know, the reach has dropped dramatically. All right, so this is the information that I am going to be dropping the graphic to below, and it is how we can get the most organic reach over on Facebook and Instagram, according to this Social Bakers report that they did. So the number one way to get organic reach is through live video. Live video is the king on all of Facebook. So you've got to lean into it. If you haven't started doing live video, I would highly recommend you start doing live video yesterday. Just get on there and do something, anything, whether you put your face on there or not. Now, the second most successful post type over on Facebook for organic reach was images. So this can be just regular images from your business, or you could actually have memes. You could have other people's images that you were allowed to share. Just anything that was image-based got a much higher reach than non-image-based. The third type of engagement was video. So we went live video, images, and now regular video. So this would be anything that's pre-recorded is regular video. And we're talking videos that were actually less than five minutes. So this doesn't have to be difficult, guys. It can be pretty simple. You either go live, you show an image, or you post a video that's less than five minutes. The fourth most popular post type with organic interactions is a link. And this is where you actually provide a link inside of the post. And the last was just a status post. Um, The status post would be a text post or even now they have the ability on Facebook for you to actually use a background color on your page's posts. And that is new. It does get a little more attention than a regular standard text post would. So try that out and see how the engagement works for you. Always try to kind of mix it up a little bit for your audience too, because honestly, guys, 2022 is all about the customer's experience. You will hear this over and over and over from all of the gurus. Customer experience is all you should be concerned about because let's face it, they are running our businesses right now. And you can just exchange the word customer for audience or followers if that is easier for you. Now on Instagram, let's just chat real quick about the organic reach post types for Instagram. The number one way to get reach on Instagram is the carousel post. And this can be as little as two images, anything that gets them to swipe. If they swipe over to see a second image, that's considered an engagement. So this carousel post idea is amazing. And I love the idea of making it like before and afters or a series of pictures of items that you see while you're out. So this can be pretty much anything. And carousel posts got an average of 176 post interactions over the last year. So definitely, definitely want to try out carousel posts if you haven't and be start, start implementing them. And then 
image posts, of course, over on Instagram are the second most engagement for organic reach. And then finally, video posts. And we're not talking about reels. Reels is a whole different section than just posts. We're talking about your grid on Instagram. So it goes carousel, image, and then video. Now, this was a lot to take in, but I hope that you enjoyed it. It was the first social media update for Creatives on Fire. I hope that you will come back and check in each and every month as I try my best to update you on the new tips, tools, tricks, and hacks that social media throws at us. Listen, until then, stay creative. Thank you so much, my friend, for listening to the podcast. I'm blessed every single time you come back and listen to an episode. It's especially amazing when you share it with others on social media. So be sure to follow Creatives on Fire online. Listen, if you have not already done so, I want you to go ahead and download the five ideas I personally used to explode my online audience growth to a six-figure following. You can find that at creativesonfirepodcast.com. I appreciate you. And until next time, stay inspired.